thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you praise. Balabozi bayadi. Balabozu da bazande gada babazede de kusha. Father, we thank you, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Yes, Lord. Today and forevermore. What you say is what you do. That is who you are, O oh God. Father, you never fail. You're faithful till the end. Faithful God, I worship you. I worship you. You're too faithful to fail me. Yes, you are Lord. Father, you are too faithful. To disappoint our expectations in my life, and I've come to realize you are too faithful to me. You're too faithful to me. Yes, Lord, you've been so faithful. Malabo Zubaya Gadaba Zibayan de Leko Sutaya Dada. Father, you've proven yourself in my life. Time and time again, you've proven yourself in our lives. That you are too faithful to fail. Hallelujah. Jesus, I thank you, Lord. Mighty God, we give you praise. We give you glory, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You are who you are. Who you are. Yesterday, today, today, and what you say. What you say is what you do. You've never failed. You've never changed. You're faithful to me. Hallelujah. Faithful till the end is our God. You're too faithful to fail me. Hallelujah. He's too faithful to disappoint our expectations. You've proven yourself in my life. And I've come to realize You're too faithful to fail me Bala bo zuba gada gaba yede de zudaba Beguda ba ze gede 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 brodo zuta ba gada gaba baba This God that is too faithful to fail This God that is too faithful to disappoint our expectation We've come to worship him today We've come to honor him. We've come to commune with him. He is too faithful to fail. We have known him to be so. We have proven him in our lives. Father, you are too faithful to fail. We worship you, lover of our soul. We worship you, great I am. You are too faithful to fail. From the ages past, you have remained God. You have remained true to your word in our lives. Father, we ascribe greatness to you, Jesus. You have remained faithful. You have never changed goalpost. When it comes to the issues of your life, when it comes to issues pertaining to your family, anything that has to do with you, God has remained faithful. He has not changed God's post. He has not altered the things that is gone forth out of his lips concerning your life. He has not altered what has gone out of his lips concerning your family. His covenant he will not break. He has been faithful. What a mighty God we serve. Thank you for being ever faithful, Jesus. Thank you for being ever true. Thank you for being so reliable. Thank you for being so dependable, oh God. 
Thank you for coming down to our levels. Time without number. Just to give your ears to our cry. We recognize you, Jesus. Not for a second have you ceased being faithful in our lives. Not for a day have you ceased being faithful. To you alone be all the glory. Thank you, eternal rock of ages. Blessed be God forevermore. In Jesus' precious name, we have worshipped him. Father, again, thank you. Indeed, not for a minute, not for a second, not even for a day have you ceased being faithful in our lives. Father, thank you. We can only thank you from the deepest of our hearts for being ever faithful, for being ever faithful. Thank you for being there for us always. Even on this platform of the travel of Hannah, thank you for being keen and thank you for giving your ears to listen to her cry all the time. Lord, I thank you because even on this special day, you are right here with us. For you said in your word, two or three gathered in my name, there I am. Lord, I know you are right here already. Thank you for what you are said to do in today's session. Thank you for the deliverance that you are about to rough. Thank you for the direction that you are about to give. Thank you, Father, for the answer that you are about to give to that question that has been asked over and over again. I give you all the glory. Saturate the atmosphere of today's midday prayer with your power. Saturate the atmosphere of today's midday prayer with grace for intercession. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' great name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on your time zone, where you're tuning in from for today's Travel of Hannah Midday Prayer Hour. I'm so excited having you tune in already for today's session. Praise the Lord. You remember the story of the man in the book of Acts chapter 3 that was carried and laid daily at the beautiful gate. There was nothing as it were beautiful about his life. But thank God for those that carried him daily and took him to the beautiful gate where he begged for arms. And that particular day, the Bible says, while he was waiting to beg as usual, then he saw the servants of God, Peter and John, that were about to go in. And as usual, fastening his eyes to beg, they look at him and they said to him, silver and gold we do not have. But there was something they did to him because he fastened his eyes on them. He had expectation to receive something. God gave him on that day more than what he bargained for. What he was looking for were change, coins that he can use for the day. But God healed him permanently. You have come to meet with God that will give you more than what you bargain for, even on this altar of prayer today. Let your expectation be online because God is right here to minister to you according to your desires in Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Please, if you haven't shared the broadcast yet, just quickly tap on the share button. Share the broadcast. Welcome your friends. Invite them. Tell them to connect and be part of this session because it promises to be a wonderful, wonderful time in the presence of God. Praise the Lord. I want us to understand that uh, the percentage of your heart that you give to God, whether it is in the time of worship or in a moment like this that you are to seek his face, you are to get to hear his word, the percentage of your heart that you give to God determines the percentage of God that is seen in you. God is looking for those that will give him their heart. When you give God your heart, God gives you his person. In Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26, he said, my son, give me your heart. So the percentage of your heart that you willingly give to God determines the percentage of God that is seen in you. So this is the issue here. How much of God is seen in you is determined by how much of your heart that is given to God. So if you want to see more of God, give your heart more to God. Praise the Lord. There is no limit to how much 
God will reveal himself in the life of an individual that is willing to give God more of his heart. Will God access your heart this afternoon? I'm sure your response is yes. Give God a bigger percentage of your heart and God also will reveal a bigger percentage of his person to you and even in your life. Praise the Lord. So I'm not able to call your names one by one, but I can see many of you tune in already. I celebrate you and thank you always for tuning in to be a part of this program. May heaven bless you immensely in Jesus' name. Still looking at our topic, developing attitude that enhances your expectation. We've looked at uh, number one, be peaceful, be decisive, and then the power of imagination. On Monday, we look at uh, be determined. So today, we'll be looking at also one of the attitudes that we need to develop because it has a way of enhancing our expectation. And this uh, quality, or rather the attitude to be developed, is to be meek, to be meek. Praise the Lord, to be meek. I would like to begin by saying that God has no front seat for the proud. God has no front seat for the proud. Not to talk of meeting the expectation of the proud. If God has no front seat for the proud, then you can talk about God meeting the expectation of the proud. In Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 8, the Bible says, Pride goeth before destruction and an haughty spirit before a fall. I would like to read from the message translation. He said, first is pride, then the crash. He said, first is pride, then the crash. The bigger the ego, <laughs> the harder the fall. The bigger the ego, the harder the fall. So behind anyone's destruction, is the absence of meekness. He said the bigger the ego, the heart resists the proud. God resists the proud. If a proud man is resisted by God, it also means his expectation will be resisted by God. God will resist the proud. And when God resists a man, whom will man run to? When men resist a man, Man can run to God for divine intervention. So what happens when God himself begins to resist a man? So there is a character, there is an attitude that a man puts on and makes God to resist him. And that is being proud. The absence of meekness makes one proud. And when one becomes proud, God by himself resists the proud. He resists the expectation of the proud. He puts to hold many things that the proud desires because the moment a proud man is resisted by God, where else can he go? He cannot advance in life. He cannot attain to any level in life. He cannot be fulfilled in life because he is re already resisted by God. God gives grace, according to scripture, to the meek. He gives grace to the humble. So we need to know what does it mean to be meek? If God resists the proud and his grace, which also means his favor, is only made available to the meek, then what does it mean to be meek? Listen to me very well. Meekness is not weakness. I repeat that. Hear me well. Meekness is not weakness. Meekness is only power that is under control. That you know you have the power, but you don't allow the power to overdrive you. It is not weakness. Meekness is not weakness as many people mistake it to be. Meekness is simply power under control. <laughs> that you are not being controlled by the power that you have. You are not drunk by the power that you have. You are not overdriven by the power that you have. You know you have the power, but you can still control the power. You can see control the power. That is what meekness is all about. Meekness is the ability to be teachable. Praise the Lord. It is the ability to be teachable. It's the ability to know that, uh, to understand that 
what you know is not all that is available to be known. It is, ava it is the ability to be teachable. I've had my husband say this repeatedly, that God is too big to put himself in one man. We see his nature distributed in different vessels. So it takes meekness for you to still be teachable, for you to still know that, for you to still understand that what you know is not all that is available to be known, that there is still another dimension, there is still another aspect of God that is not yet revealed to you, that you can still learn from other individuals. So meekness is not weakness. Meekness is power under control. Meekness is the ability to be teachable. Let's read the book of Psalms chapter 25 and verse number 9. Psalms chapter 25 verse 9. Listen to what the Bible says. It said the meek will he guide. <laughs> so God takes delight to guide the meek. He takes delight to meet with the, to meet the expectation of the meek. He said the meek will he guide. God will effortlessly guide the meek in judgment and the meek will he teach his way. God will never grow weary in teaching the meek. He will never grow weary in guiding the meek. What does this imply? God will stand by the meek when the need to make vital decision for their life comes. At different phase of our lives, there is this particular time you have need to make vital decision of your life. That is the moment in time that you need God. That is the moment in time that you need to be guided by God. That is the moment in time that you need to be taught by God on how to navigate and still arrive at his plan and purpose for your life for you to bring God to the scene at that phase of your life demands that you are meek because he said he will guide the meek he will teach the meek meaning he will stand by the meek when the need arises for vital decisions to be made God will stand by the meek he will show the meek what to do he will show the meek. He will teach you what you need to do at that hour because the meekness around you attracts him to stand by you. The meekness, the spirit of meekness in you draws God to your person to whisper to you, to show you what to do, to teach you what you don't know. And listen, when God guides a man, you can be sure the destination will be arrived at. The desired destination will be arrived at. Not only will the desired destination be arrived at, it will be arrived at in grand style. When God teaches the meek, you can be sure he will pass. No matter the examination, no matter how hard the question is, when it is God that is in the classroom to teach you because of the spirit of meekness that you possess, you can be rest assured that you will have a mark, you will have a pass mark. Praise the Lord. Meekness is therefore a virtue that controls our attitude. Meekness is a virtue that controls our attitude. This explains why uh, 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 Lucifer had a great crash because meekness was not in him. Meekness was not in him. A time came in his life. He said he will ascend on high. He will be like the most high God. He was so drunk with power Power controlled him. He couldn't, he couldn't control power. He was so drunk with power. So he lacked this virtue that could have controlled his attitude. So he crashed. Remember Proverbs 16, 18. The message translation say, first is pride, then the crash. So this, among others, was the reason as to why Lucifer crashed. He lacked meekness. It is my prayer that you will not be power drunk. It is my prayer that God will find the spirit of meekness in you 
most especially in such a time like this when the year is ending we need to be guided by God how we navigate in ending the year and also how we navigate to begin the year it is my prayer that the spirit of meekness will be found in you so that it can enhance your expectation and apart from enhancing your expectation so that it can bring God to you right on time to teach you and to guide you and to show you what you need to do it takes meekness to accept your person life is in faces and men are in sizes it take meekness to accept your person the reason why lucifer crash is because he didn't accept his person he had some level of power at his disposal but he still went for that to say that i will be like the most high god i will ascend on high he couldn't accept his person per time it is meekness that helps you to accept your person per time it is meekness that helps you to understand that life is in faces and men are in sizes it is meekness that delivers you from showing what you don't have <laughs> meekness delivers you from showing what you don't have because meekness does not accept fake meekness delivers you from trying to show what you don't have praise the lord it is my prayer that by this exaltation that you will see the need to quest for the spirit of meekness in the name of jesus christ i want to repeat when god resists an individual who will give him a pass who will give him the right passage in life it is the absence of meekness that brings destruction in the life of God's people. It is the absence of meekness that exposes one to resistance from God. But I pray that God will find the spirit of meekness in you and he will take delight to stand by you at the hour you need him the most so that he can counsel you, so that he can teach you and so that he can show you what you need to do. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 5, Matthew chapter 5 verse 5, the Bible says, bless are the meek. Bless are the meek. So there is a, a level of blessing that is attached or that is channeled to the meek at heart. Bless are the meek. How are the meek blessed? He said, for they shall inherit the earth. They shall inherit the earth. That means God is eager to will the entire universe to the meek at heart. God pronounced the meek to be blessed. That means they are, there are no traces of curses around a meek person. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. The meeker you are, the higher you fly. The meeker you are, the more blessed you are. The meeker you are, the more comfortable you are. The meeker you are, the more you are taught by God. The meeker you are, the more you are guided by God. How good it is to be meek. How good it is to be meek. When you are meek, you are blessed. When you are meek, God becomes your constant companion. When it comes to decision making, he guides you and he teaches you. And you want to know more? Meekness is one of the fruits of the spirit. In Galatians chapter 5 and verse uh, 22, Listen to what the Bible says, verse 22 and 23. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23. He said, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Verse 23 went further to say meekness. So meekness is part of the fruit of the Spirit. When you have it, just like I said, it delivers you from showing what you don't have. It doesn't allow you to be fake. It is one of the spirit, uh, uh, fruit of the spirit. So we need to cultivate it. We need to nurture it. We need to pay attention to the spirit of meekness. You never know what the absence of this spirit might have been depriving you of. You need to pay attention to the spirit of meekness. We look at the life of Moses. There must have been something that Moses did to the spirit of meekness in his life 
that warranted him a commendation from God. In Numbers chapter 12 and verse 3, he said, Now the man Moses was very meek. He was not just meek, he was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. <laughs> The meekness of Moses was so intense that he didn't even pay attention to what Aaron and meekness uh, and, and, and Miriam did to him. The Bible says he was not just meek. There's an adjective that describes his level of meekness. There's a verb, sorry. He was very meek. He was very meek. Now the man Moses was very meek above the man which were upon the face of the earth. You need to cultivate this spirit of meekness. We need it. It is one of the attitude that enhances our expectation. When God finds the spirit of meekness in you, you become his darling. He would delight to make his abode around you. And when God is around you, what expectation is it that you have that cannot be met by God. When God is around you, what prayer is it that you'll be praying that God will not answer? Moses was the meekest. This explains why when he needed God to go with him, God did not hesitate. He said, Lord, if you will not take me further, I am not going. And because God knew that Moses was meek, God said to Moses, I will go with you. My presence will go with you. The presence of God talks about the personality of God. He said, I will go with you. This also means if Moses was a proud man, there's no how the presence of God will have gone with him. The journey ahead of us is still great. We need God to be on board. But God is looking for the meek at heart. God is looking for the meek at heart, those that are in possession of the spirit of meekness so that he can walk the walk with them, so that he can teach them while he walk with them, so that he can guide them while he walk with them. Jesus, our perfect example in the book of Matthew, was also described to be meek. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 29, the Bible says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. Can you now see the vital role the spirit of meekness plays in our life or in enhancing our expectation? When God finds the spirit of meekness in you, you enter into rest. Praise the Lord. I want us to pray. I have talked a lot on this because it is very important. The spirit of meekness is already in you because it's part of the fruit of the spirit. If you're born again and you're filled with the Holy Spirit, it's part of the fruit of the spirit. You only need to pay attention to it. Remember, meekness is not weakness. It is power under control. Could you be listening to me and you have been power drunk? You need to talk to God. The Lord... I ask of you, let the spirit of meekness, the fruit of the spirit of meekness in me, let it begin to yield. Let it begin to bear fruit after its kind in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I ask because I know the fruit of the spirit of meekness is already in me. Ask the Lord to help you to water it. How do you water it? You keep watering it via the word of God because the word of God is water. The more you hear the word of God, the more you water the fruit of the spirit of meekness that is in you. And the more you water it, the more it bear fruit after its kind. That Father, in the name of Jesus, I now understand that meekness is not weakness. Meekness is power under control. I therefore pray that I will not allow myself to be destroyed by pride. Remember God resists the proud. God will always resist the proud. His grace is only made available to the meek at heart. Therefore, I want you to pray that every traces of the spirit of pride in you are hereby crushed forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember, a man does not receive anything except it be given from above. The title you have, God gave it to you. The height you have, 
in your field of endeavor, God gave it to you. Therefore, I want you to pray that pride will not enter you. Pride will not overdrive you. Remember when Lucifer allowed pride to enter him, that was the beginning of his crash. First, it is pride, then the crash. First, it is pride, then the crash. He went for that to say, where we read in Proverbs, first is pride, then the crash. The bigger the echo, the harder the fall. If you don't want to fall hard in this last quarter of the year, you need to cry out that, Lord, deliver me from every spirit of pride in the name of Jesus Christ. I command the spirit of pride to lose its grip over my life and over my destiny. The truth is the great is the crash of the proud. Great is the crash of the proud. If you don't want that marriage to crash, if you don't want your life to crash, cry out to God that Lord deliver me. Deliver me, oh God, from every traces of pride. Deliver me. I am aware that pride goes before destruction. Father, deliver me in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to slam that door, seal that door and close it. That if there be any door that unconsciously that you have opened and have allowed the spirit of pride to access your life, that Lord, I chase the spirit of pride out and I slam the door. I slammed it closed in the name of Jesus. I shut the door permanently against the spirit of pride. Overestimation of oneself is the spirit of pride. The Lord, in the name of Jesus, I shut the door against the spirit of pride. In the name of Jesus, I shut the door against the spirit of pride. Against the spirit of pride. Pride, I address you today. You are a spirit. Hear ye the word of God. You will no longer have your hold over my life. You will no longer have your hold over my destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are people that have missed out of their destiny helpers because of the spirit of pride. Where they were to be helped, their destiny helpers turn their back against them because of the spirit of pride. In the name of Jesus, the spirit of pride will not crush your precious destiny. The spirit of pride will not crush your destiny. It will not crush the opportunity that has been opened for you already. In the name of Jesus, the spirit of pride will not crush that precious destiny, that precious home. The spirit of pride will not crush that relationship. The spirit of pride will not crush that opportunity in that institution that God accorded you. The spirit of pride will not crush it in the name of Jesus. The growth that you're already recording in your life, that is as a result of the finger of God. I pray that the spirit of pride will not crush it for you in the name of Jesus Christ. The spirit of pride will not crush the good work that God has begun in your life. Listen to me. The Bible made us understand that faithful is he that has called you. Who will also do it? Listen, there are some times we render the activities of God handicapped in our lives as a result of the spirit of pride. It is true that God finishes every good work he begins, but when he senses the spirit of pride, he hands off. He hands off. He hands off. It is my prayer that God will not remove his hands over your life. God will not remove his hand over your business as a result of the spirit of pride in the name of Jesus. I pray today that the spirit of meekness will find practical expression in my life. How you conduct yourself, how you attend to people that God brings your way, how you talk, how you carry yourself. Traces of meekness will be so evident in your life, just like it was so evident in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible made us understand that he was the meek. He is a meek man. Lord, he said, as the Father have sent me, so have I also sent you. He said, take my yoke and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for yourself. The traces of the spirit of meekness will begin to find practical expression in your life beginning from today in the name of Jesus. Just like Moses was described as one of the meekest on the planet earth, so shall men describe you as the meekest. Thank you, Father. 
Blessed be your name forever. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I don't know about you, but I know deliverance has taken place already from the hold of the spirit of pride. It is a new beginning for you. God will take delight to come and teach you, to come and guide you. At that hour you need him the most, you will not miss his counsel. The spirit of meekness that is in you will attract God automatically to your person. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. In case you've been listening and you're not born again, this is an opportunity for you to give your life to Jesus. It takes meekness for you to know that Jesus died for you and recognize that you need him in your life. Pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I run to you today. I humble myself and I ask that you come into my life. Deliver me from the hold of sin. Deliver me from the bondage of sin. Forgive me all my sins. By this confession of faith, I declare that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. You are now born again. You are a child of God. Jesus is your Lord and Savior. I welcome you to the kingdom of God. The address displays our contact. You can either call or send a text message. I will be delighted to give you the direction to where the church is located. And in case where you are is a bit far from our location, I know there are other Bible-believing churches there. Please share this experience, this encounter with the pastors, and they will mentor you. You know what? In no time, you will grow. You will take root downward and begin to bear fruit upward. And who knows? In time to come, you will also be described as one of the meekest man or the meekest woman on the planet Earth. The Lord bless you real good in Jesus' name. And for the rest of us, thank you for being part of today's broadcast. I'm sure you're living here with one word, that God resists the proud, but when it comes to the meek, he makes grace readily available. It is my prayer that when you need the grace of God, you will not be denied in Jesus name. It is time to give our offering. It takes meekness to give. That is the truth. It takes meekness to give. I know I'm speaking to men and women that are meek at heart. Let's give our offering. Father in the name of Jesus again we want to thank you. Whatever we are given today is out of what you have blessed us with. We are meek to recognize that you are our source. And any branch that detach from its source is just a matter of time. In no time it will wither, it will dry, and the wind of life will blow it away as a chaff. Because we don't want our life to wither, we recognize you as our source. Here is our offering. Use it, O oh God, to advance your kingdom. And as your kingdom advance, let every one of us that have covenanted to partner with you advance effortlessly. Thank you, Lord. For it is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, wonderful men and women, again, for tuning in for today's midday prayer. I celebrate all of you, and I love you. I look forward to seeing you again on the same platform next week, which happens to be a new month. We are going to have a great, great time in the presence of God. Have a wonderful afternoon. I love you all, and remain blessed. Bye-bye.